Are we ready? Hey, thank you. Welcome <laughs> to DevNet Zone Barcelona 2019, the first session of our theater. So thank you for coming and we will open it up beyond here tomorrow for many more sessions. So please check the schedule and feel free to come back. Uh, also, Happy New Year. This is probably the last day that anyone can <laughs> say Happy New Year. So Happy New Year to you all. I'm here today to talk to you about DevNet Exchange. So as you all know, Cisco now has APIs across the portfolio of our infrastructure. And with that, we're seeing a whole new wave of innovation <coughs> whereby third parties are creating solution sets that are delivering a significant amount of value and driving business outcomes. So today we're going to talk to four panelists who are actually have solutions in our exchange um, about what they're doing and the solutions that they have and the delivery that they're providing and the business outcomes that they're driving. So my name is Par Marat and I am a senior director for DevNet, <coughs> uh, responsible for our business community. We have four panelists with us, as I said, who actually have solutions in exchange. Similar to how we had DevNet and we brought together all of our consolidated information on those APIs, our learning labs, our sandboxes, um, and code, we now have launched DevNet Exchange. In Exchange, we have a set of solutions that have code snippets that you can grab and, and build with, and we also have package solutions. The panelists here represent package solutions. Our goal is to have these solutions shared with you so that you can become an advocate around what is available for network engineers, IT, working with your line of business, your OT, as well as your IT organizations. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the panelists to introduce themselves and we'll get going. Good, so my name is Martin Wüthrich. I'm the CEO of a company called Booker & Suter. We are based uh, in Switzerland. We have a branch in Germany and uh, a smaller branch in North America. And we focus on Cisco contact centers since uh, 18 years now. Perfect. Sandra? My name is Sandra Manuelian Schlotter and I'm global partner um, at N3N in charge of partnerships just like the DevNet ecosystem partners. and. Uh, we are based in um, San Francisco, California. We also have headquarters here in Europe and in Asia and Pacific. So uh, we cover the globe. Our solution is um, working on visualizations, operations, workflows, um, bringing the data to the line of business for IT to simplify IT's life. And um, that's, that's about it, for, right? <coughs> We're going to have more questions? Ab absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my name is Patrick Schmidt. So first of all, Par and the whole DevNet team, big thanks yeah. for having us here at the show, right? Uh, being here is first of all great for Avi, but also a big business value for us. Thanks for having us, right? Our pleasure. My name is Patrick Schmidt. I'm Avi's Vice President for Global Sales Business Development. We're headquartered in uh, Santa Clara, California, but we have uh, presence in all major countries here in Europe. And but we're an infrastructure company. We're, we're coming from networking, and we do layer four, layer seven, networking services, application delivery, load balancing, web application firewalling, right? But in a pure software cloud scale architecture. And that's why we talk so much to the DevNet group. Perfect. Stefan. Hi, I'm Stefano, Stefano Linari. I'm a founder and CEO of Alleanzia. Alleanzia is an Italian company based in Pisa, the leaning tower city. And we have an IoT software gateway for Industry 4.0 projects. So we are low integration of industrial devices with application and cloud platform. That's all. Perfect. So tell us a little bit about who your typical customer is and the kind of value that you're bringing them. Should I get first? You get first. Good. So uh, having said that we are from the contact center field, then we always feel a little bit like strangers at, at the Cisco Live, previously known Cisco Networkers because we are basically, we don't deal with networks at all. We just uh, expect guys like you guys to make sure the network works, and then we can put the contact center on top. Um, having said that, when I joined the first networkers event like 15 years ago or so, the ratio between these guys over there and the developers was like 
97% to 3%, whereas in this hall here, it's like 5% to 95%. Might not be true for the whole event here, but definitely um, there are way more developers here. And, and that actually, why is that the case? So everybody, every platform vendor provides a product. And if you want to provide that product on a global scale, things are completely different in different geographies. So the CRM solutions in Europe are typically different than the ones in the US, different than the ones in Europe. And with, with the open APIs, companies like us here, or also developers from your end side, could actually um, go in and develop their own solution and integrate the technology into a business application so that the business can really take advantage of the underlying platform <coughs> without actually having to know the real details behind it. Perfect. Sandra? I, I'm going to add on to what Martin said. Uh, API is, is the key word, right? I think for developers out there, um, and I'm not a developer, but I know that APIs have made life a lot easier. And what N3N does is actually uses gateways, already pre-selected gateways, to pull data from different disparate systems. So our industries can be from manufacturing to retail. Imagine putting a camera on a manufacturing line, pulling that data into a solution that detects before the machine goes down or before that production line goes down and alerts the operations that something is happening. Now you have all that in real time, thanks to the APIs pulling the data from the edge, from sensors, OT, IT, video, and consolidating it all onto a visual operations workflow and facilitating that for the line of business. So that's to add to the API, that's why we're all here together in DevNet, um, working together on um, being able to connect the data from the edge and being able to make decisions in real time. Yeah, API is the common theme here yeah. between all of us, which is great. So, you know, for us, application delivery is not a new thing, right? So that is in the market for 20 plus years. But application architectures have changed fundamentally and you can run an application on so many different clouds these days. So with what we have developed, you can manage the service levels for all your apps, whether they sit in Google, whether they sit in Amazon, whether they sit in Azure, or in any of your local data centers through API calls, through a single API. And the value that that creates <coughs> is a 50% cost saving, and you deploy your apps 60 times faster than before. It's as simple as that. Uh, Aliancia leverage an API from a, a little bit different side because uh, a developer like our friends here want to access uh, using same APIs to different industrial devices. But unfortunately, industrial devices are there from years and years with a technology that is aged and is designed to produce and control, not to interoperate. With Alliancia, we provide an abstraction layer with a semantic information available over API that can be used for people who manage network, dashboarding, CRM, ERP, and so on. We have the lower layer that is able to abstract complexity of industrial protocol and moving at the next step at the API level. So it, it sounds like, especially from N3N and Sandra and Stefano from Alliancia, that your, your solution touches multiple business organizations. Line of business, OT, and IT. How do you bring those synergies together and navigate through an organization to first tell them about your solution and then get them to work together? Sandra, do you want to answer that? Go first again. Oh, you want to go first? Okay, no, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Absolutely good. So, uh, again, you need to see us a little bit from the compact center side. Things are, again, a little bit different. So, very business-led. So, uh, a contact center manager that owns a contact <coughs> center, uh, the last thing he worries about is network or technology. They just don't want to deal with it. What they want is they want to optimize the, the workforce of their agents. So they want to make sure they can save five to six seconds when an inbound call comes in. So that's all they care about. They don't want to know why, why this is happening, how this is happening, it just needs to work. 
On the other hand side, you have the IT people that want to know all the details. They want to know which protocol are you using? Is it encrypted? Is it not encrypted? Do we generate re release dependencies if we integrate two systems together? Oh yes, no, let's not do it. And then sometimes you end up in a fight where the business says, I need it to save seven seconds on a call. And IT says, no, we don't want it because it's going to generate the mess on every upgrade. And that's the challenge we typically see in all those discussions. Now, the good thing is when we can bring these two teams together and actually have them sitting at the table, sometimes even starting to know each other. Oh, you're the business guy. Oh, you're the IT guy. Oh, I didn't know you. Um, and they start to have a first time a dialogue together. Then usually the chances are pretty good that they will agree and they realize that the business outcome is important, but you don't want to create any technical depth on the IT side as well. And, and you can mitigate. <coughs> Uh, that between the two. Uh, when these guys don't join the table, then we're basically the middleman and we run, we're the postman. We run from business to IT and try to explain and, and link things together. That's not a good thing. We're unfortunately still seeing that nowadays, but, but today I think what is really important is bringing both parties together at the table and make sure they understand each other's position. Perfect, and, and to a large degree, that's what we are trying to do with uh, DevNet Exchange making these solutions much more visible so that all of you can even identify them and take them to a line of business or take them to IT and avoid a shadow IT organization trying to solve or block these solutions that are coming to, to the market. Sandra, yours is even I, actually, more complex. Yeah, I, I, I liked your you know, IT and OT meeting each other and we, we do the same thing. We're sort of facilitating these companies, uh, typical large enterprises have very siloed um, line of business. Everybody does has their own applications, everybody runs their own solutions, um, and IT has just fixed things, right? So I think that now IT is realizing they have a bigger role with digital transformation um, and acceleration of all this data out there on the edge. Um, and all these different applications with different uh, data centers, how do you merge all that? How do you bring it into real life? And IT's life has become much more complex, but actually much more interesting as well, because now they're working closer with the line of business on their needs of what are they, so if I'm going to take an example, um, retail. A retail store has facilities, has multiple locations. If you can monitor those retail locations from one place or a manufacturing company. If you can monitor, then you have those productivities that Martin was talking about. You can it creates efficiencies in, in workforce <coughs> and productivity in the outcome by having that data at the hands of the operations. So OT can get all that information from IT, from sensors, from video, and collect all that with N3N's platform that creates rules and, and rules engine that helps determine if something is, if there's a long line, let's say at the POS in a retail department store. As an operations person for that store, I need to make sure I'm opening up more, more lines for the POS. But as a CIO, I want to be able to see all of my operations across every country or every region where my stores are. So the CIO is sort of the new digital chief, right, that needs this information at the tip of their hands, but each operations can also facilitate their job because now the store supervisor knows he needs to open a POS. The inventory people know there's missing inventory. So you're bringing all that on a single operations pane and creating a lot of uh, efficiencies, cost efficiencies, productivity, um, which everybody, as if impacts everybody at the bottom line, right? It absolutely does. Yeah. All right. so. We as Avi, as I said, you know, coming out of the infrastructure, we don't work so much with lines of businesses, but we help IT departments to better meet the needs of the lines of businesses. And I want to give you an example. And I need to be a bit careful because it's an example from Switzerland. <laughs> as Martin is from <laughs> Switzerland. <laughs> Any more Swiss people here in the round? Any more people from Switzerland? Okay. No. So <laughs> this, is, this is from the Swiss lottery, Swiss laws, right? Swiss Laws has a couple of times in the year a huge jackpot that they offer to the market in Switzerland. It's called Euro Millions. Actually, this Friday, 1st of Feb, they offer in the jackpot to win 135 million Swiss francs. Wow. So this is about 125 million euros or 115 million dollars US, so it's huge. So, so if we all bond together, can you buy us a couple of tickets? <laughs> yeah. We have to ask Martin, you <laughs> know? We have to ask Martin for that one. <laughs> but you can imagine that those couple times of the year, 
You know, the people in Switzerland, they want to access the applications of Swiss laws, you know, with a much higher penetration than throughout the normal week. You know, 40, 50, 60 percent more traffic comes to their apps. So by using Avi, you know, we can scale up and scale down the needs and the service levels that those applications are requiring, right? And with that, actually, Swiss laws confirms that they not only save 60 percent of cost, but they reduce churn because they increase customer satisfaction. Mm. So in the past, the system wasn't available, you know, and broke down and customers stepped away. We ensure that it's always on. So customer satisfaction is increasing, revenue goes up. So we help IT departments to better meet the SLAs and what lines of businesses are requiring. Now, is it the same, is it the same departments within IT and data center that would explore and leverage your solutions? Because you're, you're cloud-based, so is that add a different dimension to who you need to talk to and get buy-in from? Yep. We support a couple of different use cases. So we work with cloud departments, we work with DevOps teams to better roll out applications, right? Microservices, Deutsche Bank is a great reference customer for us in that case. And we work with the classical networking departments just by replacing what they have in the infrastructure to reduce cost. So all of that across the board. Okay, thank you. Okay. Stefano. <coughs> Our market is join operation guys with IT guys. Uh, we work in the industrial space, so the industry 4.0 or industrial IoT as you call. It. And when you connect one device to the infrastructure, you have, yes, to exchange data, but you have to provide the possibility of the people who use the machine and people who use data even to speak together how they can share a common language. We can translate for sure information from Profibus to MQDT. Yes, we can do that. But our application is even an enable, enabler for, for them because we provide a simple interface, a web interface for production guys that is simpler like an uh, interface for a printer or a modem. Just few clicks. This is my machine I want to share with my IT department. Yes. And I know which information from my machine, from my job, they are looking. Because yes, one of the main problems that you have to solve is internal resistance to connect production assets. Because in such a way, my boss are spying me. What they are looking from my daily activity. If machine is stopped, they can see, they can tell me something, they can really understand what's happening, or they simply see that producti production is down. So, we provide a simple web interface where all information available is in a list, and like an uh, app over your mobile phone, you have your ERP, and you have to provide authorization on the edge to which information your boss is looking for. You can see my speed, my temperature, my this, and this other information, maybe not. So at the end, you can even maintain a certain equilibrium between operation and control and monitoring. This sounds like a simple things, but Alliancia provide one trusted point where information are exchange it in format and control it in access. And it's a third parties that yes, it's a IT device running inside Cisco devices, so it's sound network, but it's installed inside the control cabinet usually. So production guys see our software like a piece of their facility. So it's we can even enabling this communication and this po checkpoint between the two worlds that actually in the companies are completely separated with different targets. Can, can you share with us, keeping with you for continuity, uh, customer success and, and the business outcome that it drove? Yeah, yes. Uh, we can share several uh, customers where we install our device. Actually, Alleanza have, we measure the amount of euros of connected assets that our software manage. 
So we have about 6 billion euros of industrial devices that exchange information with their boss using our technology. One reference case that I like to show here is for Pagliari. Pagliari is uh, the oldest and largest Italian cosmetic company. They produce soap and other home care products. They are based in the north of Italy. And they have to move their production plant that is managed by hand, by experienced people uh, after 30 years of experience. When these people have to leave the company, they have to move to a modern approach and a scientific approach to program, manage the production line. They have 10 machines, one by another, that have to be tuned to reach the maximum speed of the entire line. And they ask us to put all this information inside the big data analytics platform to provide analytics that learn from the experience of the guys until it's still working, and then proceed in a, some automatic ways. So when, when you first explored the solution, uh, one of the things that we talked about before the panel was the, the way you approach difficult problems. And I, I think just, just so our audience knows, uh, Stefano is actually one of the, on the team that won the Nobel Prize for the CERN project out of Switzerland. So he brings a very unique, how many times do you get to introduce that, right? <laughs> um, he, he really provides a unique view of how to solve business problems. Can you share yeah, that? I yeah. found that really interesting. This comes from my experience when uh, you work in, a, I work at, at CERN in Geneva and Fermilab in Chicago for a nuclear engineering, um, I'm a nuclear engineer. So, and when you have to solve a problem, something that no one has never built before, this large Hadron Collider, I worked there. And there was a rules from my boss. My boss won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> it was, you have to do this piece and you can do with this technology, but it's a little bit larger, it's a little bit heavier, but you have another technology that, yes, probably work, but it's a little bit lighter, or there is another way, will be the lightest, smallest, but no one tests it. It's possible or not, and their answer is, pay more and do the impossible. Because we are here to do research. If it's feasible, it's not our stuff. So, after 10 years of this approach, I move this approach even in my companies. So if someone has still done, it's not interested for us. So our idea is make Industry 4.0 as simple as connecting printers to a PC. Sounds strange, yes. And, but and after eight years, we are able to do. And is, is everyone familiar with the term Industry 4.0? Maybe we should explain that. It's sort of addressed as in uh, manufacturing as the fourth industrial revolution. Did I ex explain that correctly? Do you want to expand on it? I, I don't we hear, couldn't you. hear you. Yeah. Oh, um, for industry 4.0, yeah. can you explain what that is? Just so everyone's familiar with the term. I, I, you, industry industry 4.0. 4 oh, what, what that means. Uh, yeah. Okay, industry 4.0 is uh, a, someone call it industrial IoT. So it's the possibility to connect industrial devices to in, uh, information technology and application, cloud. Every software tools able to extract value to information that until now was used just for control, local control of equipment. We have to m add intelligence. It's something like, not internet of things, but internet over things. So moving internet technology over industrial that. devices. I think, yeah. I, Sandra, it, please okay. add, yes, absolutely. Uh, in, industry 4.0, um, I, I, I guess it's 4.0, whatever they call it, is really, again, about collecting the data that's usually, as you said, on machines 
But now imagine, and what N3N does too, is replacing those sensors with a camera. So imagine again, the production line has a camera. Um, and today, the operations people don't know if a machine is down, and you have remote factories in different parts of the world. So our success story is a manuf auto manufacturer, Hyundai, is using IoT, is using operational sensors and video sensors and ERP systems and backend systems to look at when was the last time a machine was repaired or maintained. So now you have different data sets that are being pulled together to be able to stop a machine before the outcome is non -good, not good in the production breakdown. So instead of waiting to see that the production line is not working properly, now we can use cameras like eyes, sensors, that are remote in remote factories and pull all that data in and be able to even send a message to the IOT platform, operations platform, to shut down the system, right? Absolutely. So that's, that's using all of that consolidation of data and having it live and having a camera that looks and tilts and zooms and can even see a piece of the machine to see which part is not functioning properly. That's another eye sensor, that's a 4.0 industry where now we're using robots and we're using machines instead of humans um, and becoming much more productive. So they decrease their, product, they increase their productivity and the workforce productivity from uh, four hours a day to one hour <coughs> a day in just monitoring and surveilling factories that are remote. Um, and I think $1.4 million of annual savings in monitoring and looking at sensors and pulling in different data to be able to stop and make that decision in real time before the product comes out defective. So it's a sizable opportunity and a, a tremendous business outcome that we're together with Cisco and our partners yep. really being able to capitalize upon. I, I want to follow, have poor Sandra talk yeah. some more because you're also doing things in smart cities. Right. So we're doing things in smart cities and we're doing things in, so smart cities, imagine again, different operations, right? You have the, the uh, the police, you have the ambulance, you have parking, you have lighting. And Cisco Kinetic, for instance, uh, if you're familiar with the IoT platform, Cisco Kinetic for Cities, collects data from light posts, from uh, parking spaces. So we can pull all those different applications onto one command control for the city. So the city of Miami-Dade, for instance, today has different operations panels, but the CIO and the mayor of the city can see all the different operations in one video wall. Um, and any particular event or incident creates an alert, and immediately um, the, the CIO, but also the, all the different departments know where to dispatch police um, from one remote area. So you're not you know, having to communicate walkie-talkie, you're actually seeing things <coughs> live, you can see how many police cars are there and dispatch that particular res auto response. We're also doing physical security. So, you know, physical security, and I don't want to take this. No, no, take. please, because it, it, all of you experienced this right. uh, here at the venue, so please. So, if physical security, uh, uh, Cisco is actually our customer. So we work with DevNet partners, like GeoShield and SingleWire, you might, you might know, who are notification uh, for alerting in case of an emergency. Um, and for public schools, safer schools and campuses, but also events like this. We're using video, we're using Wi-Fi, so badges, uh, Bluetooth, any type of sensor to identify um, anybody that is in the event that's not supposed to be at the event. So we're using facial recognition, AI, pulling the video streams <coughs> from the video cameras. We're not doing that here live, don't worry. No one's on the blacklist, <laughs> but we are, so the securities operations for Cisco are concerned about public safety and staff safety. Right. Cisco staff, but also attendees, it's Cisco's responsibility, right? So how do we use technology, Wi-Fi, to locate um, badges that are lost or stolen? How do we identify, how do we account for the staff if in case of an incident, active shooter or some emergency? Now we can see with MAC addresses, mobile devices, where everybody is. So um, it helps the uh, emergency crew to respond faster and it helps the Cisco services, uh, security services identify who's there, how many people are there, use cameras and use all the different sensors to get a quicker 
evacuation if need be, use digital displays to show people how to evacuate if they have to lock down a part of the building. So really using all the different sensors and digital and, um, and this is tools. this is data that we're getting off of the programmable network. So these are applications that are ubiquitous. I mean, what company is not concerned with physical security, right? Right. So being able to come working with DevNet partners is really driving at that value. Right. So why don't we go ahead and shift back to Patrick, sorry. Um, can you tell us about automation in the data center and how Avi is working with Cisco and maybe reference a customer and, and talk about the, the uh, delivery and, the, and the, the improvements that you were able to achieve? Sure thing, thanks Pa. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the good news is that um, our solution is 100% complementary to Cisco's portfolio. Having said that, we have worked with the Cisco business units to you know, put a seamless integration in place through our REST API you know, with the Cisco ACI solution, you know, with the Cisco Cloud Center, Cisco Tetration, all those types of solutions you usually find in the data center, but not only in the data center. You know, also with the Cisco uh, ICE solution, for example, for mobility management and identity management, for example, you know, we interface through the standardized ACI. Uh, standardized API. We do this in a certified way, so for you as a customer, everything is pre-tested, pre-certified, you can be ensure it's simply working once you roll it out. But we've also combined, you know, our service and support model, so that, you know, if there's a case, if you want to open a case, if you have a problem in your ne networks, you could open a case either with a Cisco Technical Assistance Center or with an AVI technical assistance center, just as you like. You know, and on the back side of things, we work together. So that is seen as a huge value, right? So seamless integration, whether you roll out a Cisco ACI fabric, ACI, multi-cloud, and uh, anywhere is a big topic here at the fair, right? We integrate perfectly well with the Cisco APIC. Having said that, you want to deploy networks. Now you can deploy networks not only in layer two to layer four, you can deploy them and automate the deployment from layer two to layer seven, independently of in which cloud the network is going to be provisioned. That saves huge cost and efforts, you know, to all of our clients. And also it eases up troubleshooting, you know, significantly, because it's one interface you look into. You know, one interface from Cisco, one interface from Avi, for all applications, any type of data center, any type of cloud. 50% cost savings, 60% faster troubleshooting, and higher availability for all types of applications is the result. Wonderful. Martin, can you share with us um, the, the solutions that you're delivering to uh, companies? Because CRM is everywhere. Every company, it, that, that's a basic uh, offering that you have to have in order to do business. So share with us a little bit about some successes that you've had and how you've used DevNet to actually modernize your solution as well. So first comment maybe, unfortunately today there, there are still companies out there that don't have a CRM and some of them even believe they don't need one. And sometimes they even have the idea to write it on their own. So that's, you, that's you mean I can call and talk to a real person? No, that, that's just misusing <laughs> misusing developers writing a CRM today. There are good CRMs out there, enough of them, so better choose an existing one. And then coming to your point, is actually integrated in our case with the underlying contact center infrastructure. That's all we do. And as an example, in the US there's a huge uh, trash collection company. So they have uh, I don't know twenty five thousand trucks that drive around the cities and pick up trash. When somebody has a lot of trash in front of his house and uh, the truck didn't pass by yet, he can actually call them. And then our connector will actually provide the caller information into the CRM. In the CRM, there will be a pop-up. Um, the agent immediately sees where, where is uh, the caller calling from, so where is his house. And he can also see where are the next trucks or where are the trucks the closest to his location. And then he can actually deviate one truck and make sure that uh, it passes there and picks up, and you can say to tell the customer that in five minutes you can have a truck that will pick up the trash. That's all. Why, why does that generate business value? First of all, the customer is really happy because he gets an immediate reaction by a truck that pulls up in front of his house in a couple of minutes. 
Second of all, for the agent, it's very, very convenient. He no longer needs to m search manually uh, what's the address of this customer, where is he, and then p go into another system and watch the status of the trucks and where they are. It's all automated. So while the phone is ringing, he actually can see the two dots on, on the landscape on his map, and then he can immediately divert the truck there. So typical saving is five to seven seconds per call, multiplied by a couple of thousand agents. I'm not to say the number of how many agents they're really using. It's quite impressive. Um, so we realized our price was way too low because after half, half a year, uh, he had already saved more money than he actually paid for the integration. Mm. So having said that, with, with a tiny little, almost stupid connector that talks to one API on the south side and to another API on the north side, you can actually generate quite a lot of business value. Perfect. And you've been, Boucher & Suter has been a long-term partner with, with Cisco. Um, in fact, you were working with Cisco prior to DevNet actually being born. Can you share with us your perspective of before and after? Yeah, absolutely. So when I joined the company 23 years ago, um, then 18 years ago we started uh, doing business with Cisco, I would have dreamed of something like this. Because uh, here you can walk in several different classrooms and you can actually watch the presentation of an API live. That was really cool. 18 years ago, if you wanted to integrate with a Cisco product, you had to find the right product manager, and then you basically had to beg him for an API description. And if you were lucky, you got a PDF. And if you did not have that much luck, you might have gotten code snippets or whatever fancy stuff, but not in a standardized format. Uh, the second problem then was when something doesn't work, um, usually you had to call TAC, and TAC is always excellent in finding a problem in a, in a in the roots of the stack, somewhere down in the network or wherever, but TAC usually never thinks about that could actually be a bug in, on the API on the software layer. And with DevNet, that has completely changed. With DevNet, if, if you're not sure, open up a DevNet case. A developer will look at what you're trying to do. If he's not quite sure where, where things are wrong, he's going to involve TAC. If he knows that you're doing something wrong in the code, they will actually help you. And that's, that's a huge difference. So we are nowadays much faster. It's much easier to be, bring new developers on board. Um, before you had to go uh, everything trial error a lot, and um, that costed a hell of a lot of money. And nowadays, when a new API comes out, we, we watch the sessions, and then we let an apprenticeship kid or one of the younger developers just play around with it. And when he needs help, he, he opens up a definite case and then he, he gets help from Cisco, so huge Wonderful. difference. Yeah, and Stefano, you were sharing with me that you're actually using the sandbox yeah. to have SIs get their hands on our, our platforms in order to work yeah. with your solution as well. Yeah, our, for, for us, sandbox from DevNet is something that is fundamental because uh, a lot of <laughs> system integrator and software vendor are approaching industrial IoT. They want to move their knowledge over this kind of data. But when you have to touch real data in a production environment, at the end, it's dangerous. So providing a full set of sandbox, virtualizing the edge environment over IOX, our software inside with a machine simulator, creating your management infrastructure, maybe with Kinetic. All it's in a safe, uh, in vitro environment. So you can play, you can test your application, your logic. Try to control machines, as Sandra told before. If there is something wrong, stop it. Yes, but you must be sure before to stop a production line. So <laughs> it's better to test it more and more time. And having all simulated is uh, an incredible resource for every developer. And uh, Cisco, DevNet provide a full stack simulation and set of tools for developer, helping us to distribute our software and at the end create value in the market. Wonderful, and last, last question before we can open it up for some questions. So all of you now have your solutions in the DevNet ecosystem exchange. Can you share with us what value that's brought you in terms of working either with other partners and solutions within ecosystem exchange and just actually to your overall bottom line? Martin, go ahead. 
Okay, so when, when we started building the first few connectors, then there was always a, a custom solution and we, they were individual among different customers. When we decided to productize them, um, then at that time CDN came in or, or then DevNet with, with DevNet Exchange. Nowadays we have like 12 connectors on DevNet Exchange and if you look at our global revenue, then 50% of it just comes from these connectors. So it was, it, the other 50% is the systems integration work, 50% is clearly just software revenue. So think about it, it scales really well because you, you, you write it once, of course you need to maintain it. Uh, you upload it to, to, to the platform, customers, IT or business can actually find it. Um, and, and then you can sell it on a global scale. Uh, again, we, we're based in Switzerland, Germany and a little bit in the US, but we can sell in, in Asia Pack. Why? People look us up on App Exchange. They, they can find us, and, and they, they immediately get way more trust. And when they believe that strange little Swiss company uh, tries to sell me something, right? Because you could just go in and search actually by technology platform, by vertical, by region, and you can also search. We have a subset of those solutions that are actually on the Cisco GPL. So you don't have to stop and try to find out how to buy them. You can connect <coughs> directly with them and get them off of Cisco. Sandra, do you want to talk about the discoveries you? Yeah, made? I mean, I think it's it's to your point, Stefan, earlier. Is I think having a sandbox environment is key for developers. And again, I'm not a developer, but I, I work very closely with our developers, and that's always the first question: is how do we test out the environment in in vitro and behind closed walls before we put it into live production? Um, and I think DevNet is 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 critical and crucial for that. So. Um, we're working with a, um, a visual layer that takes a lot of different APIs and a lot of our partners are on the DevNet. So, you know, s s we're working with a facial recognition company, their API will be there, Cyber Extruder. We're working with um, Single Wire, that's a push notification, they're on the DevNet. So how do we pull all those different APIs together and, and create that sandbox to test out the systems talking to each other and production, before putting it into production. I think that's the key value. Wonderful, right? Yeah, so I want to complement what uh, Martin has said. So everything around the ecosystem exchange also is too fast, right? But there are two additional points that create a tremendous value for Harvey. The first thing is, you know, DevNet's learning classes, training offerings. You know, everything that Harvey does is based on API calls. So as you offer, Learning classes or network programmability helps with the adoption of RV networks technologies in the same way. And the second thing is, we're part of solution. Sorry, I got a bit of a cuff, so I need to have a problem. <laughs> um, we're part of Solution Partner Plus, right? Right. That means we're part of Cisco's price list. Our technology is now available to all Cisco partners, to all Cisco's customers out of a sudden. Obviously it's tremendously valuable for us, you know, in our revenue growth, to hit our revenue growth targets, and in combination with the joint support model, it's a fantastic value for all of our clients. Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. And Stefano, you're the, you're the newbie of the, of the group, so we just actually have listed you in Ecosystem Exchange, and, and you'll be able to see a featured solution profile on, on what you have, but, but go ahead. Yeah. We, we are joining now the, the, the ecosystem with our tools and we are sure that people who are developing all the other pieces before and after our software, so that have experience on the edge, have experience on kinetics, uh, experience on dashboarding, CRM, yes, we can cooperate together inside a common uh, grow fast growing environment. So even here in this panel, I met for the first time guys that probably before the end of the week will be able to run a POC for every customer because we are sharing same technologies and we have a very complementary offering, helping us even, yes, Cisco uh, communication um, umbrella, even umbrella is in a, okay, misleading. <laughs> it is. Yeah, we are very happy to, to be there, to be on this stage and yes, even today we demonstrate the power of this ecosystem. 
Wonderful, wonderful. So that, that concludes our panel discussion. Or if there's any questions, feel free to raise your hand and we can bring a mic around. No? Well, and I, part, if, I, if I may, sure. if anybody wants to see, um, and I, may, I don't know where you guys are, but if anybody wants to see the N3N solution, we're going to be in the world of solutions, if that's okay. Um, and anybody wants to see it, you yeah, guys included. Uh, um, we are <laughs> going to be in coffee? the NOC, so the NOC, the Network Operating Center, at the very end of the solu Words of Solutions. Uh, please come and ask any questions or see the N3N Operations Command Control. Yep. Uh, we're using it for physical security here in the event, so you'll find it interesting. Yeah. So. Well, so now I have to let someone else do a shameless plug. Oh, as sorry. Well. <laughs> Uh, or is that in the world of solutions? I think. World of solutions in the NOC, N-O-C, okay. at and the very end. We, in the showcase. I think you have showcase. a booth yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah, you, you guys are too, right? You, you can't miss us. Oh, there you go. You can't miss us. We're a ghost Come sponsor. Visit, <coughs> we are in the world of solutions. And we're in the Cisco investor section because oh. thanks to Cisco, Cisco has become an investor in our yes. latest um, D-series funding round. Wonderful. So you're here Great. twice. Thank you all for your time. Enjoy the rest of the week and please do come back and see some other sessions in DevNet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.